tie it down. Here we go. Three, four, two, one, six, three, four, nine, six, four, Hike. go. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How you doing? It's Wednesday. It's 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which means it's time for us to talk fish nerdery. I think I'm pretty sure <laughs> that's what it means. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you so much for being here. Glad you are hanging out with us tonight because it wouldn't be the same if we were just talking to a random camera with nobody to talk to. I think that would be a little strange, don't you? Just have a live stream that's with nobody? Like private? A private uh, live stream? This is a private live stream. It's just the two of us. Great and, for uh, the introvert. Yeah. Like me. That's right. <laughs> could... And you know who's here right now? <laughs> Your boy, Jason. That's right. He's here. <laughs> she hates that. Oh, she hates that. I really uh, do. I think that I should start every live stream with a bit of trivia. Movie okay. or TV trivia. All right, go quick. I learned the darndest things. All right. Remember the TV show Fantasy Island? Barely. Back in the 80s? I think 80s, right? How much did it cost for a weekend at Fantasy Island? How much did uh, oh, on the TV Mr. Show? Rourke charge the guest for a weekend at Fantasy Island? Can I guess? It's an exact amount, yes. $3,000. No. Okay, yes, yeah, somebody else can guess. All right, so. Guess. If you guess, uh, you get the Junior G-Man point for that <laughs> one for the day. You don't actually get anything. But by the way, <laughs> we, will do a, we will do a giveaway. It, I am not, we are not quite there yet in terms of my master giveaway plan. But Juniper Berry says $100,000. MTS 6,900. So, mm -hmm. In between there. Okay, we're narrowing it down. But anyway, <laughs> I do have something I want to give away because I love this thing. And so later on, don't worry, we've got stuff for you. And before we get into anything, can we just say thank you to the people? For all, those of you who showed up at the last two swaps, the GCCA oh, swap yeah. and the Greenwater swap last Saturday, both of those broke records we had a bunch of people at the green water swap there were hundreds and hundreds of people there and again we sold out a fish probably by what 11 15 or so the swap opens at 10 it goes from 10 to 1 i think we sold out by 11 15. it was crowded thank you thank yeah. you for that so uh, it was a great swap january a great a great swap month so thank you uh things we've got going on this week in videos last sunday i was just trying to think real fast we did i did we did right that was you and me yeah honey garami versus betta if you haven't seen it or if you think man you know what that's an easy one watch the video maybe somebody will convince you otherwise i will say this when we did that video i thought i was i took the honey garami side and you i did. thought i was just gonna be on the total loser end of that because bettas are so popular. But what I found out was that wasn't necessarily the case. No. That there were a lot of people out there like me. Oh, well, I mean, you love the honey grounding too. Oh, I mean, yeah. We, we usually take a side, but They're we sweet. could flip that side and we might come up with different, different advantages and disadvantages. But I was very impressed with how many people loved the honey garami. So that was cool. For your, for your uh, bonus for the honey grammy, you didn't even mention the coolest thing about them. I didn't. Their, well, their little arms. You know what? Right as you said that, I was thinking about that. Yeah, that was a big miss on my part. Big that, miss. I mean, that isn't that why a lot of people get garamis in the first place? So Especially cool. when they first start out. Yeah. I mean, that's what I liked about them. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at the arms. Kind of like angelfish <laughs> fish have them, but garamis <laughs> like really use them, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I missed it. So you basically held that back on purpose until now? Yeah. You wouldn't, You didn't want to give it one away and be like, oh, no, oh he's going to win the with the arms. Other side, you yeah. totally would have. I understand. Oh, Oink wants to know what's on my shirt. This is um, Noah's Ark. I got it at the Creation Museum. It's really cool. It's it's really it's it says shipbuilders. I have. And you know it's what got this a is? bunch of cool stuff on it. I love T-shirts. This is the very first yes. Aquashella shirt. So I you want? I'll let I you have, in on a little secret do here. Do even have one? Um, the little secret is. I just wore this to the gym and I forgot to change my shirt. I just looked down. I'm like, what shirt am I wearing? I'm like, oh. Huh. So, I mean, it's okay. I don't smell anything. Well, you hurt your arm, so you didn't really That's do a whole true. lot of I, I came home from the gym. I'm like, uh, sweatshirt, can you get this off? Yank this off my back because it's He's busted. It's messing me up. So, yeah, I really jacked up my elbow Monday at the gym and I made it much worse at Karate Monday night. Bravo. And then I decided in my infinite wisdom, I'll take a day off. 
because it one day solves everything. And then I went to the gym today and it didn't feel that great. I'll, let me just put it that way. But from going not to be able to move it on Monday night and Tuesday morning to being able to go to the gym, that, that's feel pretty good about myself. Tony, thank you so much for becoming a prime timer, primate, prime time Ooh. partner. I appreciate it. Thanks for being here, hanging out. Lynn's here. What's up? We got Oink, Whip, James, a moderator. They're coming out in full force. Thank Sweet. you for being here. Appreciate it. The uh, Do you want to know the Fantasy Island? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. I know we're all dying to hear that one. It was in the pilot episode that I, I just caught. I, I just had to see it. The, the pilot episode, Fantasy Island, back in the 80s. $50,000 for a wow, weekend. That seems That's like how some, much they pay. That really seems like one of you should have guessed that. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> it was just a round like number. You, I, what you didn't did I even, say, three grand? Yeah. I don't know. It was the 1970s. You got inflation since then, so I figured 3000 back then is worth like a million now. I thought it was very much, uh, interesting fun fact. Sharpie said ten grand. I think maybe Sharpie came the closest. I if mean. I would have guessed and I wouldn't have heard it, that's probably what I would have guessed. Okay. ten grand. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we did the Honey versus Betta on Sunday. You on the small skate today, what did you do on your channel? Oh, I talked about two new plants for me. Ooh, ooh. They're beautiful. Oh, that's Stunning. all you want to give. Okay, yeah. I guess I suppose yes. you don't really want to talk about the plants because no, you'd have to watch the video. I don't want to do a spoiler. Okay, yeah. So you got a couple of awesome plants. By the way, yeah. uh, members, I actually released the video for members today instead of tomorrow. I know some of you are so used to the Thursday video, but I wanted, I just couldn't wait to show you some things. We got a lot. And I mean a lot of new fish. And I wanted to show that to you so you could see. Because usually what I try to do is I try to bring in, in unusual stuff, right? I mean, yes, there are some things that we bring in that are somewhat standard. But some of the stuff is like, wow, this is not something I've had in a very long time. Or maybe it's something I've never had. or And I, I just like to keep it interesting. And that's one of the things when we do the swaps. It's like the last go around, we had the Allen Eye Rainbow. We had the Red Spot Gobies. We had and still have a few of the orange Madaka rice fish. So there's just things I'm like, you know what? These are just cool fish. Need to bring them in. Uh, red rainbows and the rainbows were big. Yeah, I'm they were. Think of what else? Oh, like you know the L11A. Yep. Um, lizard tail plecos. Super cute. They're kind of orange. They get about that big, but they're really peaceful. Yeah. So this time around, I promise you, you will not be disappointed because I brought in a bunch more stuff mm -hmm. that is. It's cool, I think, and not necessarily stuff you always see at the pet store. All right, some things that are a little bit harder to find every once in a while. Yeah. Skippy, skippy. And, yeah, and you're happy too, so that's that's what matters. Yes, I our, am. Our thing. Uh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We, I, will be doing a video on a long-term review of something I reviewed about, at this point, I think it's been over a year, and I I don't know how I feel about it. Really? Yeah, I really don't know. I don't. Some good, some bad. Well, you just gonna have to watch the video. I feel conflicted in a major way. Wow. So that'll be that's Sunday. A, that's a that's trailer. a cliffhanger. That's a cliffhanger yes. for you. Uh, where we're gonna be? Because this is gonna lead into our discussion tonight, and it's not gonna be a long discussion about all these aquarium things, uh, places to go. But where we're going to be in the very near future. So this is the end of January. So next month. And I mentioned this last week, but we are doing our first ever Quad Cities swap. So for those of you who go to Quad Cities, the way it works for us, if you're ever interested in buying our fish, I will put the fish on the website, usually three or four days before the swap for pre-order, prepay, and then I just bring them, they're bagged up, and you can pick them up. You don't have to worry about, are they gonna be there? Are they not gonna be there? So that's how that works. So you'll be looking out. I will post that on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. So by the way, if you're not following us on Instagram, primetime underscore aquatics, definitely check that out. And then Facebook, I think it's primetime, oh gosh, I don't even know what it is. What is it? So primetime aquatics, I'm sure if you search it up, uh, you could follow us there too. But I do a lot of announcements uh, about stuff, places we're gonna be. So that's the dealio there. So Quad Cities is on the 19th of February, that's in Davenport. Then the weekend after that, that Sunday, we will be at the GCCA Swap, Greater Chicago Cichlid Association. That's also a Sunday, 26th of February in Northbrook, Illinois. The weekend after that, I can't believe we've got three in a row. But the weekend after that, the 4th of March, which is a Saturday, we'll be at the Greenwater Swap in Tinley Park. So we've got a very busy streak of three weeks coming up here in the not too distant future. So that's the story there. Now. 
the main topic of tonight. Cool aquatic conventions. I wanted to go over a few things in case, and I have been getting asked this, I cannot tell you how many times, because people were dying to know what is going on with Aquashella. Because normally they have the Aquashella dates posted not long after the last Aquashella of the year. And this time it took a little bit longer, but there are two dates that are out there for those of you who don't know. And that is, let's see, May the 20th. So May 20th and 21st. So you got a lot of time to prepare now. You still got five, almost five months. May 20th and 21st, that's Dallas. So hopefully uh, you can make it to one of these. So Dallas is in May. And then new location, Daytona. So Daytona Beach, uh, that is November 4th and 5th. Crazy. I cannot wait because I have been of the opinion for a very long time that if there's going to be aquashellas, I would love to for them to be near a beach, around water. I just think that's kind of cool. So uh, while I, for those of you who live close to Orlando, I'm, I'm sure that's a little bit of a disappointment. Like, man, I can't just drive over there as easily. But hey, it gives you an excuse to go to the beach, I suppose, in November, which is going to be pretty awesome. So that will be very cool. So I think that's, those are the first ones. Now you will notice that there's a, there's a location missing, and that is Chicago, our hometown. So that is currently not scheduled for 2023. And we'll we scared them off. Yeah, we'll just have to see what 2024 holds. But for right now, we've got we've got Dallas in May, May 20th, 20th, and 21st, and Daytona in November, the 4th and the 5th. I hope, I hope, I hope you can be at one of them because, like I said, it's all about you. It's one of our favorite times. I know, just like you, for the people who just, you know who love to just attend and check everything out, and all the creators, all the creators are like, it, it's something that I think everybody who goes. I mean, I know everybody who goes year after year to all these different locations. It's one of the things we look forward to the most is hanging out with everybody and just nerding out about fish all weekend. And it's I love the fact that when the, the weekend is over, I'm exhausted, I can't talk, I'm hungry. I like it. It's and, nice and quiet. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I like getting no sleep over three days and just hanging out with all of you. That's That's what I want. So that is my commitment to you is during those two weekends, I will be, I will lose my voice, <laughs> I will be exhausted, and I will love it. So, it's gonna be awesome. May I take a drink of water, please? You may. She said I took too many drinks of water, so now I'm really self-conscious about it. She's like, drink more water before the live stream. <laughs> you take too many drinks. I'm like, I know, but I talk a lot, and I get thirsty, so I'm sorry. Yeah, but I also can't really handle the sound of like, drinking and chewing and and it's like really loud. She really like, can't. It's actually I, it's, insanely annoying there's for a, me There's and a for name her. for it. It's a yeah. it's a curse to live with it like I do. Anyway, Fish Tank Barn, <laughs> dude. My. Thank you so much for the super chat. And you <laughs> were next on the list of cool things we're going to be doing in 2023 because on the 9th of March, we are going to be at the Motor... Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, because I'm just going off of memory. Motor City Aquarium Club, I think, is, is that what it's called? That's a cool right? name. So I'm going to be giving a talk there on the 9th. I think that is a Thursday as well. So if, if again, I'm trying to go off memory. So, yeah, I think if the 4th is a Saturday, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's a Thursday. So if you are in the Motor City area, otherwise known as around Detroit, I hope you get a chance to stop by and check it out because I hear awesome things about the club all the time. And what you need to know about Mike is Mike... Is an integral part of all of these shows because yep. he has <laughs> the party van. <laughs> he does. There's never been a party in the party van, but the party van takes us places. And pretty much all the creators that you know, that you know and love, trust Mike with our lives because he is the driver. He drives the minivan. Pretty much everywhere. And when he's not there, it is not the same <laughs> because he, he just... He's awesome, and he knows all the ways to get to places, and he always does it so safely and makes us feel so cared for. So that's happening. Uh, the month after that, not to be outdone, on the 20th, which is, uh, that would be April 20th, which is also a Thursday, we're going to be at the Masi Talk, M-A-S-I, which I believe is, uh, this one I'm going to mess up for sure. I should have looked these up before I go blabbering Sheesh. on about it and give you good information. But it's in St. Louis, so it's, I think it's the Missouri Aquarium Society. Maybe I 
Oh boy, I really feel like a loser for not looking that one up. But I know it's going to be way cool to go. because there's some cool people that hang out there. Fishy Biz is down that way. And cool. so is Melanie, uh, who That's does right. the Oaza uh, really Melanie cool Blackwater Holmes. Aquascape. So I'm looking for that. So. Yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. So that's, again, that's going to be the 20th of April. So again, if you're in the St. Louis area, really want to see you there, that would be really cool. And then, fast forward, brrr, uh, this summer, that's right, brrr, that's how we're doing this, uh, this summer, and by the way, if I miss any that are really cool, because I don't, I'm just talking about the ones that I know of, uh, and there's not that many, this list is almost done, but if there are other ones that you think, hey, you got to check this out or go there, you know, go to this one, Put it in the chat because you guys can chat away all the really cool aquarium and convention things that are going on. But on the 13th of July, we have the ACA, American Cichlid Association, which is combining with Cataclysm up in Madison, Wisconsin. And I, how many years, how many times has Cataclysm oh happened where I was like, I want to go to that. And now it's like being every combined, year. combined with the ACA. And I'm like, oh, that that's going to be cool. So definitely want to check that out. Fast forward to September, September 21st is the Keystone Clash. I will be there, you may not be there for that one, but I will be there and they have me scheduled to do a talk and maybe a panel and I don't know, they keep saying, okay, here's some things we were thinking about. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna be doing there, but I know it's gonna be fun because I know that a lot of you have talked about the Keystone Clash and how cool it is. And then there's one, one other one, but I don't, I'll mention it because it's a cool event, but I don't, think we're going to be there because it conflicts with a swap and something else. And um, that is November the 17th is the OCA, Ohio Cichlid Association. Uh, that's their convention. Mm -hmm. So the Ohio Cichlid Association extravaganza, that's the word I was looking for. Uh, we didn't get to make it last year for the no. same one of the same reasons because we actually had two things going on that day or that weekend. And then I think we're going to have two things going on that weekend as well Bummer, again. Because I really like so, that. Yeah, it's a really cool one. But if you get a chance to check that out, that's in Strongsville, Ohio. Uh, it's south of Cleveland. That's a really cool one. Even if we're not there, it's still going to be cool, really cool. It'll be cooler without us. Yeah, saying. probably. Yeah. But uh, that is, those are some. Those are some of the things that are are happening. I think when I mapped it all out on a calendar for 2023 in January, I said, hey, you know what? She's like, what? I'm like, there are... We have 34 aquarium-related events <laughs> that we're dealing with. 52 weeks, though. So yeah, we've got some weeks out. off, and the nice thing is most of it, most of the summer is off. So, and that's when you really want to have some time just to do other things as well. Uh, let's see here. November is it normally that late in the year? Yes. So OCA is always in November. Mm -hmm. uh, the the issue typically, the the other issue with OCA is it usually butts up really close to one of the aquashellas, whether it's Chicago or this year it's it's just a couple weeks away from Daytona so that always can be that duh, that's the other thing I was like what's going on that month where we're not gonna be able to make it two trips excuse Upper me we're gonna be in, well yeah we're gonna be in Daytona that couple weeks ahead of time and then we've got a swap so we're and there's a GCCA <sighs> swap I think the week before so it's just there's only so many aquarium things we can do true yeah so anyway I'm wondering, does do you guys have? I, I know I'm forgetting some things like um, Fish Room Fever. He he's got one that he's involved in. I think it's in Kentucky. I thought I saw another one oh, that yeah. might be in like Louisiana this year. So I don't I don't remember what they're called though, and I, I should know because yeah, what is the one um, that he does? Uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Come on, everybody, help us out here. That would be really here. cool to go to. We, we, yeah, didn't we try to go last year? You, I think we did, and then there, there again, was, there was some kind of conflict. Uh, Lavo says your channel is giving me the confidence to get my get into the hobby after wanting to for years. Thanks from New Zealand. New Zealand? Oh, Are you kidding me? Wow. You know what I would love with all of my heart and soul? Oh, here we go. I want <laughs> everything in me for there to be an aquatics thing in New Zealand, and we get to go because see the I Shire. may never leave. Yeah, and I could see the Shire yeah. and all the other places. I think, just from the pictures, I've obviously never been there, but on my list of places I want to go in the world, New Zealand is top three. Can you drop Might me off in England? Top one. Drop me off in the UK. New Zealand is like in the top three. It could even be top one. Okay. Really? Wow. New Zealand, Australia. Yeah, those are like way up there on my list of... Wait, New Zealand and where? In Australia. <laughs> Why is that funny? Australia? Australia. 
Australia. Australia. Oh boy. Here, wait, this is a fun Australia. comment. Coral Works says, Hey gang, prime time. I just wanted to say Alex from Secret History. Hey. We love Alex. Uh, always has good things to say about your channel and knowledge, yeah. sending us viewers your way. Aww. That's cool. Thank you. He's Thank the coolest. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I, I finally got to meet him yeah, this well, year. Well, we both did. I was starstruck. The AGA. The yeah. AGA slash, or was it a slash? No, no. I guess it was just AGA. Just AGA. But yeah, that was cool. Slash uh, AGA. <laughs> yeah. And Alex, I hope you can get to, I know it's a long way away from the West Coast, but either Dallas or... Uh, Daytona. It'd oh be cool to have gosh, you there, man. Yeah. Geek out. That would be nerd cool. out. I don't know if he's talk here. Talk about nerdery. Yeah, he's right here. Is it's he? all over the place. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm like way, way up in the mm -hmm. chat here. Okay, so hold on. Uh, Janelle says Kentucky. I'm in Aquaticon. That's the other one. It's in Knoxville. Sorry, oh. Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, Fish Tank Barn also said American Live Bear Convention. So the ALA, AKA convention combined in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, but that's the star. That's the same weekend as Dallas Aquashella. So that one, unfortunately, uh, we'll have to miss. But that's cool. So if, if you can't make it down to Dallas, there's another cool thing happening in the northern part of the United States in Kalamazoo. Um, MTS says, make sure you say hello to Mr. Feed, the fish, and Boss Man Aquatics at the Quad City. Oh, Boss Man, yeah. Yeah, Boss Aquatics. <laughs> we I got cool. to meet him for the first time in, where were we? Whatever the last Aquashella was. I get them all mixed up now. What was that, uh, Florida? Orlando? Or was it Dallas? Or was it Chicago? No, it wasn't Chicago. It was one know. of the faraway ones, but good guy. Like him. He became one of our late night crew people. He fit right in. It was great. Me, him, Fishy Biz, John, a sure. bunch of other people. All yeah. all y'all weirdos. Yes, we're very Fish weird. Fish weirdos. And we're okay with that. Uh, I had a, There were a couple questions. Columbia Tetris. Columbia Tetris. Love um, it. In a community tank. I yeah. think both uh, Duke... Uh, Aquatics and um, Juniper Berries want to know. Yeah, Colombian Tetras in a community tank work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we had them. They're, they're, they're great fish. They're great looking fish. A couple people asked me in my top 10 Tetra video, why didn't they make the top 10? I'm like, man, mm -hmm. they were close. And you, I, I had to... I had to scrap a couple that were they were kind of moving around in there, and that was the Emperor Tetra, which I absolutely love, and the Colombian Tetra, which is a great fish. Uh, get a get a group of them, just like you would with any other Tetra. Now they're a little bigger, right? So they're a little bigger than your neons and things. Uh, pretty active too. So I personally like them at least a, a three foot tank. Uh, four foot would be even better, just because of their size. If you try to cram them into a twenty nine or twenty long, they can be a little bit a little bit cramped. Uh, CSV says Aquashella in Orlando this year. No, Aquashella, the Florida Aquashella in November on the 4th and 5th has moved to Daytona. So it's pretty close. Pretty close. Oh, I got some peeps here. You do? I got, thank you. It's Miss Phonia. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. All right, Shelby from sure. uh, Garden of Eater. Always have to have some noise playing when someone eats or drinks. Rock oh, on. You know what? I yep. think you should try that because I knew it. I try. I, that's why I always want like the that thing or something. that she de that she has is good for absolutely no one. It makes her miserable, and then it makes me like self conscious. I'm trying to like. It's like somebody just <laughs> so, yeah. somebody like, somebody I'm described just it. My food over here. Described it very well. It's a rage response. That it would is, explain a lot. Yeah, it's like really yeah. like. Mm. And then yeah. uh, Bruce says uh, my wife has the same thing. Oh, help us all! And then uh, freaky fish lady has it. <laughs> uh, Mm -hmm. I when I was younger, like nobody had this thing. It's just like a I wonder if somebody put something in our water to make us sensitive to other people's chewing. It must have been. I, it had. I I don't know. I don't know how it starts. It must. Yeah. I'd like to know because if I could overcome it, that'd be great. Because it really is hard to to eat by certain people. All right. Fuzzy says, "Have you guys ever kept trophies? Yes, I have kept trophies before. It were they were in my 150 early on." If I were keeping them again, so if I were going to do trophies the way they were, when I kept the trophies, they were just with a bunch of other random cichlids, and they fit in <coughs> just fine. But if I were going to keep them again and I was going to do it right, I would prefer to have at least a 90 gallon. And it's weird because okay, well the 75 is the same footprint, but yeah, I actually like that extra height for the trophies. Most likely, I would want a six foot tank. I would get a six foot tank, lots of rock work. I'd probably keep them on a darker substrate just because I really want to see that contrast between their, their dark colors and especially some of the ones that are a little bit lighter in color. Now, I'm not a trophies expert. I've only had a few different species 
for the most part, they were fairly aggressive towards one another. So you got to keep them in a large group. Uh, they don't particularly like a bunch of protein in their diet. And so I, I think about that two ways because I, I've heard two different perspectives on the whole high protein with entrophius. Perspective number one is keep them on mostly vegetable matter, which is good advice. But the second thing that I heard from people who have kept them, and that, that's what I did. So I, I kept them on mostly vegetable type foods, right? Uh, low protein for the most part. But then there's a group of people who have gradually started to feed them a little bit higher protein foods. And over time, they seem to, to react to it well. Now, I think what's happening is most likely whatever microbes are in their gut, what we call normal flora and microbiology, probably adapted to, or at least the colonies adapted to that higher protein content made it a little bit easier. I don't think I would chance it, but normally trophies work best in a trophies only tank. Keep it a large tank, keep them overstocked, and they're really cool. I like them. <laughs> Funny stories. Skydiver Tanner says, my old roommate was a loud eater. He, he won't go out to eat, and I... Oh, he'd want to go out to eat, and I would. I wouldn't want to. I always declined because I didn't want to hear the, his loud eating and slurping. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That could be rough, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But he says, "Bum, no Chicago. It is what it is." Yeah, for yeah, Akashella, no Chicago. Yeah, it's especially unfortunate for us because we could. That was the one place where could it was hop right over 35 there. minutes away. Yeah. I uh, didn't have to worry about a hotel. Although in some ways, I think I was a lot more tired with the Chicago Aquashellas because really. After, well, after everybody was like, oh, I'm going to go to bed now. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go to bed, but I've got another half hour, 35 minutes to home to drive. I can't just walk upstairs in the hotel room and, and go to bed. Oh, right. Oh, so I'd have that long drive. And then we'd also have, hmm. we'd have to get up earlier because we couldn't just walk downstairs and, and go to the event. We had to leave and drive there. True. But didn't think of that. we didn't have the long drive out and back. You shouldn't have stayed out so late with your friends. Well, you know what? You're not that young anymore. Yeah. Rich says, I got a polar blue parrot convict cichlid a few days ago, and it's super cool. Yeah, I like that those. That sounds cool. Yeah. I know a lot of people with the regular convicts, they breed just so crazily. And most people, when they get bigger, they're like, I don't want this thing anymore. It's digging, and it's tearing stuff apart, and it's ripping my plastic plants apart. But the polar blues are really cool. I like them. I like them. Yeah. All right. So if you got any questions... Definitely put the at primetime aquatics in front of the question, and that way it highlights it in orange for us, and we can see it a little bit easier. Uh, it just makes it better, uh, more efficient. Uh, Skydiver Tanner says, love my black emperor tetras. Yeah. Black emperors. That'd They're cool. cool. Yeah, those are cool tetras. Yep. Both show them. Mm -hmm. Alex says, have you kept two or three geo species together? Any in a 40 or 55 possible? I want to try them next. I've only had the dwarf species in the past. The, the, the regular geophagus, could you keep multiples together in a 40 or a 55? I don't know because the only ones I feel really comfortable keeping in a in a, in a a 40 would be the geophagus tapajos. And at that, it would probably just be a pair, most likely a breeding pair. Because once you get a male and any kind of female, they tend to want their own area and even the females will push the other females to the other side of the tank. That actually worked out okay in a 55. The problem in a 55 is many of the geophagus species get really large. Right? And what I mean by really large is they get larger than tapos. The tapos males will max out maybe six inches. Where like your wine milleri, your altifrons, cernamensis. Uh, what else have I had? Um, well, th that group, I mean, most of them are kind of the same when you start getting into that. Uh, the They tend to get like eight, nine inches. And so in a 55, they start looking a little cramped. The Geophagus steindactyri to me are a little bit too aggressive. I had them in a 40. They breed really, really small. I'm not kidding you. I got those things home. They were probably two and a half inches. And all of a sudden, I had a female that was holding. Surprise, uh, it's one of the surprise. few Geophagus where the females are maternal mouth birders for like the entire span of them keeping the eggs. So that was kind of interesting. Brazilianzas, way too assertive slash aggressive to keep in that size tank, I think. I had them in a 33 long when they were growing up, then moved them to a 125, and then they all got a disease and it wiped out all of them and all of my red spot gold severums too, unfortunately. Uh, but those were, those are cool. I wouldn't keep those in a 55. So I would, I would probably opt, if you're going to do at least a pair, I would probably try to keep them in a four-foot tank. 
but I don't know if I would mix them. Because the because they look so similar, if you've got multiple males, they are gonna go after one another. Right now I've got Altafrons. So in the last month we've had Altafrons, Tapajos, Wine Milleri, Cernamensis. We have Dichrososter in the 75. Yeah, so we've had five in the last couple months. The cool thing about the Dichrososter is if you have one, you don't have to worry about like what you should name them because that should be the name because it's so cool. That's the name? Yeah, Dichrososter. Yeah. That's my fish, Dichrososter. Yeah, it sounds like a character in Ghostbusters or something. You want to know something? <sighs> oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Rage. <laughs> We're going to see a rage in a few minutes. It'll be entertaining for you. Do you see Watch all the green hearts? Cup. Do you see all those green hearts? Yeah, yeah, oh, I've been seeing those popping up. I gave my green neons a shout out. Yep, I've been uh, seeing those popping up on some of my green comments hearts. lately on Primetime Aquatics. <laughs> Especially in the Tetra video. Yeah, it's like That's a right. gang sign over here. That's right. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm being Showing infiltrated the green by the neon green, love. Yep, the green mm -hmm. neon lovers are, mm -hmm. are in full force. This is a fun stocking question. We'll see okay. if we pick the same one. Uh, okay, I, wow. I know what I'm, I know what I'm going to pick. Okay. Justin says he's uh, setting up a 20 long planted tank, yummy, yummy, with chili raspberries and galaxy raspberries. What bottom crew should I look at running? What are you putting in there? I know what I'm putting oh, in. Oh, for the bottom crew? Yeah. Um, well, it's going to be Corey's, and that's just a matter of personal preference. Either uh, the ones that I'm really loving now is the Adolphi Corey because they've got that nice orange top of the head. Gold laser quarries are really amazing. Here's a funny story. Can I just tell this funny story and then you can answer the rest of the question? Sure. At one point, I had gold lasers in some tank. I think it was a quarantine tank, maybe one of the tens. And I decided I was going to chuck them in the low boy with the purple spot gobies and the black mollies. I have six of them and I threw them in there. Well, I saw them for a little while and then they went away. I'm like, oh man, I wonder if they died in there because there's so many plants. You can't pass. I mean, it's just... If they it's die, there's plecos in there. Versus those plecos, they're just going to go vanishing. So at one point, I got up to seeing three of them at a time. I'm like, well, all right, that's cool. And this was after a couple months. I'm like, all right, well, there's three in there. I guess that's not too bad. The other day, I'm feeding them. All six of them were there. Now, I have not seen the other three. Maybe I have, but they just only come out three at a time. They're just messing with me. But I don't think so because the, the other three that I saw, two of them were big. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's all six of those gold laser quarries in the low boy chowing down on food right now. How cool is that? I haven't seen those other three in probably over a year, at least a year. Crazy. Yeah, so anyway, Adolphi or Gold Laser Quarries would be my pick. So with, with, with CPDs and Chili Resboras, I personally would go with Pygmies, a big mm -hmm. old posse of Pygmies, and maybe even a Clown Pleco or two. Okay, well, the Clown Pleco is a good choice because that will deal with some algae where your quarry cats will not. Mm-hmm. Barstale Goldens, thank you so much for being a member the last four months. How old or large should a Pistogramma cockatoides fry be before sending to swap or local fish store? Mine are doing well. Male baby's about an inch. Oh, and I now have honey garami fry. That's cool. Oh so, my gosh, could you imagine how cute? Yeah, it is? that's oh. a great question about the Epistos. I think in either case, you're going to get a lot more money when they're showing color. Right, so and they show color relatively young. Like you know, you said the the male babies are about an inch. If they're not already just starting to show a little bit of, I'm assuming, um, you know, a little bit of the orange on, on their dorsal fin or on their tail, they're going to be pretty soon. But I would definitely wait until they're showing some color. Local fish stores they need that color. Otherwise, people aren't really going to. Only the true fish nerds are going to be able to walk in there like, oh wow, you got a pistogram of cockatoids. Let me go buy those even though they're young. But the color and the size will allow people to, okay, I want a pair, right? So that's what most people want. They very rarely want two females. Uh, sometimes they want two males, but that doesn't always work out. So it's usually, that's a pistogramma are usually best when sold in a pair. So for that, you're gonna wanna be able to sell them at a size for the local fish store where they can easily differentiate and there's color. So people are like, wow, what's that? I wanna buy that. At the swaps, that's not necessarily the case because I know for if I were selling them, most likely I would sell them small. So maybe an inch and a half or so, but I might sell them five or six to a bag and be like, hey, you figure it out uh, when they get to a size, whether you've got males or females. I know around here, the epistogramma are there, people are asking for them and not a lot of people have them. So it's been a pretty hot commodity in the Chicagoland area. So that's, 
how I would handle that. What do you have? Oh, uh, all right. So Alex had some had some fun choices. Red Tail Lake uh, Inley Loaches and Rosy mm -hmm. Loaches is bottom crew. They all come from the Lake Inley with uh, CPDs and erythromycrons. Okay. <laughs> they um, clean amazingly at a nearite and boom, cool. no algae. I like that idea because I sometimes yeah. forget about the rosy, smaller loaches too. Rosy loaches. I wonder if the, how the dwarf chain loach would do in a tank like that just for annihilating snails. I don't, they might be a little bit too aggressive for those smaller fish because sometimes they like to chase fish around too. But mm, uh, for dwarf sport. chain loaches, I had brought those in a while and they're really, really cute. It's just, hmm. they are definitely, they can be a little bit of a, a butt <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> uh, Brittany F., thank you so much for the super chat. I have a baby Oscar in a 75 gallon tank. He's alone right now. Is it okay to add a second fish? If so, what and when? Better add him young just because the aggression and the territorial situation won't be as great if they're really small, especially if you're talking about baby where you've got an Oscar that's two, three inches. They will sometimes accept other fish a little bit more readily. What would I add? Well, there's really safe things to do with that baby Oscar that won't cause issues. You could consider some non-cichlid type fish. So in a 75, maybe something like the mascara barb would be pretty cool. It's large enough where even a full-grown Oscar is not going to eat it. They're fast. They're quick. They school. They've got great color. You could do in a 75. I guess you could do silver dollars, although they're not as as um, pretty as probably the mascara barb would be. Um, I any type of like fancy bristlenose pleco, but I would try to get them a little bit larger, just because the Oscar is going to grow so fast. You don't want a really tiny bristlenose that winds up getting eaten in like six months. So if you can get close to full-grown male bristlenose, like your super reds, your long fin. Um, blue eyes are really pretty. Uh, long fin dragons are really pretty. They usually ignore one another, you know, and you can do both. Uh, what else? What else would we do with an Oscar? Like I said, I mean, it, it can get along with other cichlids. We've kept them with electric. The, the problem is a 75 gallon. So that 75 gallon is going to get cramped, and he's probably going to be not too. Um, he's probably not going to want a whole lot of other cichlid friends in his in that territory. But I've kept them. If you if you had a larger tank, like eventually if you move into a six foot tank, you could do things like electric pluacara. We kept them with geophagus steindactyri. Uh, the geophag almost all geophagus would work just fine. Uh, I kept them with thrictis maculopinus, which is like a fire mouth type cichlid. I had them with a the big giant uh, Nile tilapia, which was 18 and a half inches, and they 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 were buddies. They almost they never got into any squabbles or anything. But that was a large tank, so. Um. Asaya says, looking at my green neons right now. <laughs> I'm jealous. Sweet. What a great view. Yeah. Oh, oh, and this is a this is a very good question. From Gov's Fab Shop. A uh, local fish shop has real nice striped Raphael cats for six ninety nine. Thinking of starting a few in my forty breeder with Serpe Tetras and Corys and then moving to my one twenty five. Can I go wrong for seven bucks? No. And that's another good one with the Oscar for the 75 gallon. We have a striped uh, Raphael cat in our 150 and their mouths are pretty small. So it's not like some of the cats that have a really large mouth that are just gonna gobble up a lot of other fish. To the best of my knowledge, he's never eaten any other fish in that tank. Of course, some of them are, are overall probably a little bit too large for him to eat, but they are- He looks like he ate one, but he didn't. I know, he, the, what's he's so very weird- large. About, I have to do a species profile on this fish at some point. Yeah, we had him. He's he our deserves, oldest fish in the fish room. He deserves his own and show. The problem is going to be it's going to be a really boring species <laughs> profile because he doesn't really. I mean, he does. I guess I could film him when he's swimming around gobbling up food because then he's like a, a fish vacuum. But after that, <laughs> excuse me, after that, he just kind of sits there on the log. Yeah. And what's interesting about the Raphael cat, for those of you who have never kept one, is one, they're a bigger catfish. So I remember when we got ours, it was probably an inch and a half. It was really? so Really? I can't even picture it. And we him. actually got it from PetSmart. And really? It was tiny. Because I remember it fit in the back of that gray decoration that had this little bitty hole in there, and it would swim in there. And the Raphael cat, at least what ours will do, is it will pig out on food for a solid three or four months. I mean, it will eat everything that falls to the bottom, and it's a fast eater. It will outcompete other fish for food. It will go to the top of the tank. It will eat like the big food sticks and all that stuff. And it will gorge itself and it will get massively huge. And actually, you got to be really careful with them because if you overfeed a tank, they will overeat to the point where they, were die they will die. So they get really, really, really plump. 
like to the point where they're just kind of sitting there and they're like, um, I think it ate way too much. So you have to be careful with that. But then what ours would do, and at first I was like, this thing's going to die. The first time it did it, it kind of just swims into a place where it can just chill out. And then I don't, I don't really see it much. For like two or three months, it doesn't really eat. It just kind of chills. And then it gets really active again and it eats a bunch and then it just chills again. So it's a really interesting fish. They have the striped and the spotted. So you could actually do both of them. And they're really awesome. And the other cool thing about them is they can live an insanely long time. It's not uncommon to see them go 25, 30 years. So if you're going to keep them, know that uh, they're going to be with you a long, long time. Do you have something you'd like to say? Yeah, this is from Zeus X27. What plants would you put in a small Tetris only 75 community planted tank? Substrate is the sand. No, oh, you can answer this one. I, I have I'm opinions, curious, but I would my first plant that I would that I picture is Val. Valsneria. Yeah. It's the first plant. I think that would be really cool with I see like river rocks and then really vertical, the veil going up. Um, could have, in a 75, you could have some really sweet Anubias in there too. Yeah, some of the Anubias get big. I mean, yeah. Crips, those are usually the, you know, kind of like a really kind of a fab trio. Yeah, and Your some tank. of those Crips will easily, I mean, we've got some that I made a mistake and I put them in a 20 long and they, they <laughs> outgrew and they pushed the lids off, like the plastics, I use polycarbonate lids in a lot of the tanks. They push those up and they're growing like, you know, two feet tall. Some of the crypts that we have in the 29 are base, and, and the Anubias in some of the 29s are as tall as the tank. So those would be really cool. The crypts, especially in the center, if you had like a big old crypt sort of foresty thing. I'm sorry, Anubias. Anubias in the center as a big foresty thing and then crypts kind of surrounding that and the jungle bell in the back. That'd be pretty cool. And they're simple plants. That's why we talk about them so much because for the most part, they grow in a lot of different environments. Tom? says what other more less aggressive in buna can i keep with yellow labs and rusty cichlids trying to find a good match well first of all that's a good combination so you've got yellow you've got kind of a purpley brown uh pseudotrophia solosi are somewhat hard to find these days i really got to start breeding those fish again i used to breed like crazy and i got lazy over the go. shutdown and i stopped pulling the females and now i need to separate the rusties and the solosi i think and start breeding them both again. I really want to breed the slow side, but Pseudotrophia slow side because the the females kind of get like an electric yellow. They almost look like a male Kenii, where the males have light and dark vertical stripes, which will add that that blue color. So then you'll have the purpley brown with the rusties. You'll have the yellow and black with the yellow laps. You'll have kind of a fluorescent yellow with the female Pseudotrophia slow side. You'll have the blue and dark blue stripes for the males of the Pseudotrophia slow side. If, did you say a tank size? If you have a large tank, the Pseudotrophius ACI is a good one too because they'll be a solid blue. And then if you get the yellow tail ACI, they'll have yellow dorsal, yellow tail, but they get big. So even in a 75, the males at seven, maybe a little bit slightly larger, can look a little bit cramped. And especially if you've got multiple males in a 75, sometimes they don't appreciate one another. But if you have a six foot tank, those would be a really good option too if you wanna add some blue. I also really like the red zebra. I have found the red zebra male out of what we just talked about will probably be the most aggressive. But if you can find someone who's got one red zebra male and maybe like five, six females, depending on the size of your tank, uh, that would be really cool because then you get that nice, beautiful orange color and they're very striking. So that would be my combo. Tom C says, the geos I purchased from you have been so fun to watch grow. That's cool. I bet. That's awesome. Oh, geos. I love geos. Yeah. Who, who, it's hard not to love them. It really is. I think it's... Didn't Wait, didn't somebody, didn't somebody say that they're ugly? Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. We were at a swab. It was a green water <laughs> swab. Young guy. Yeah. Probably like 20 years old, 22. And he, he was, I think he was with his mom. Mm -hmm. And I loved this. He's just like, just a straight shooter sort of guy. Yeah. And we had, we had... Geophagus altifrons, right? That's the one in the 150. That's like, to me, like one of the pinnacle awesome <laughs> fish when it gets old. I had a picture on the table, like, hey, this is what they're yeah. gonna look like when they get old. Yeah. And we were talking about something. I'm like, I think he wanted larger fish. I'm like, dude, you got a D. I had one bag left. Yeah. And I mean, they were, it's one of those ones where people come in, they're like, they're all gone. He just shows up, I'm like, this is the last bag we got. This is what they're gonna look like. He's like, 
those are ugly. He's like, oh, I'm like, those are ugly. Hey, okay. Like, I'm not layers, taking those. Yeah, two minutes later, <laughs> so I was like, I want those. But it was pretty funny. He, he didn't say to it to be own, He wasn't no. mean. He was just, he was just, he was just sharing his, ugly. his opinion in a, in a way that, that was someone younger. He probably wasn't even funny. 20. Maybe he was even younger than that. Yeah. Might have been like mid-late he, teens. He has, he has his own taste. That's right. And he, he's his own man. Yep. Alex, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Here's to hoping I see you guys at one of the Aquashellas. Maybe they'll want another talk. I've got new talk for our Seattle club next month on biology, genetics, and history of fish domestication from five regions in antiquity. Bring your I notebook. am really hoping that yeah. you can work out something with the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association to get out here this year. Uh, reach out to me. Uh, just not here, but message me and, and see if that's been taken care of because if not i, I want to make that happen because i think the the talks that you have prepared would be we'll fly out here like every month for the end of the year <laughs> who's here alex again but he's got something different to talk about yeah yeah so alicia says 29 gallon tank blackmore goldfish going to buy them small eventually upgrade to a 40 breeder in a year or so can i do two mores and a 29 for a year will two cause dominance issues for a year, I think you'll be okay for a year. Uh, they, if, as long as you upgrade to that 40 breeder, you'll probably be all right. Um, I don't keep a ton of goldfish. I've got, uh, or what, should I say that? And then I've got, what, five or six in a 75 gallon that are, that are working out great. But most likely they'd, they'd probably, I mean, keep an eye on them, but they'd probably be okay. Lior, what's up? Curious. On your take on dirted tanks, treating bacterial infections by adding bacteria from local streams to compete instead of meds and no tank cleaning, did you ever consider it? I have considered dirted tanks, and I know you were thinking seriously about experimenting with them. I personally won't do them in my part of the fish room for a number of reasons. One, I like the freedom to be able to put whatever I want you know, size appropriate in a tank whenever I need to and switch things around and move things around if I need to. And that would definitely prevent me from doing that. That particular tank would then be designated for fish that absolutely positively do not dig or disturb the substrate in any major way. And unfortunately, we keep enough fish that might want to burrow a little bit or dig a little bit, small cichlids and things where it's like, okay, well now that tank is no longer an option. Uh, in terms of the competition adding bacteria from local streams, for me personally, I'm not comfortable with that because there's a higher likelihood that we're going to add in some type of parasite that these fish have never seen before. So if you know the, the fish originate, let's say, in Indonesia or Taiwan or uh, you know Jakarta or someplace overseas and they're brought into the United States and they wind up at a pet store and the pet store winds up selling them to you, and then they wind up in a dirted tank and we add whatever it is, substrate or something that has microbes in it, there's a chance that you could be exposing those fish to parasites or bacteria that they've never been exposed to before. And so it, would, it could potentially overwhelm their immune system. I would personally, especially with the, the stuff that's on the market right now, uh, for cycling tanks and stuff, that would be easier. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of using meds unless absolutely necessary, but when they're necessary, then if we do it right, I, I just think that in the long run, it, it's probably safer than exposing them to potential problems. Now, dirted tank from your side of things, you're somewhat kind of sort of interested in it? Yeah, I am. I am very curious, but you're, the only thing that would be a negative for me is because I do like to tweak my aquascapes after I do it. That's another one, yeah. <laughs> Even yep. the next day? The next week i may want to check. yeah and that's uh so that would be really hard you know yeah. hold my trigger finger there can we do the giveaway yeah while i'm thinking about it so again yeah. we're not in the mode i i've i've been saying this for probably a, a couple of months now a month and a half i've been working with our channel sponsors to really come up with a very rigorous plan for 2023 and we're way behind uh fritz the person who handles that been extremely busy. Rob at Flip Aquatics is going absolutely crazy lately. And we've been insanely busy because we've been dealing with all these swaps and stuff. So we're going to get our act together, hopefully for February. But I did have some stuff. And Fritz did send some cool stuff to us because I asked last month, I'm like, hey, you know what? There's this lull in between our grand plan and when, you know, when the giveaways end in 2022, can we do something? Like, oh yeah. So, I mean, they're so generous. They, they just... When I ask them for stuff, they're just like, when they hear giveaway, they're like, 
here you go. And all of a sudden I, on my porch, I'm like, there's like a case of stuff here that I wasn't thinking of. I'm like, oh, just give me a bottle of this or a box of that. No, they give me like, here's a case, have fun, do it. So this is from Fritz Aquatics, uh, the giveaway tonight is from Fritz Aquatics and they are a channel sponsor. They're one of two channel sponsors. Fritz and Flip Aquatics are our channel sponsors for 2023. And Fritz Aquatics is, in my opinion, one of the premier uh, manufacturers of aquarium chemicals, whether that's for uh, dechlorination or testing or all kinds of stuff. So uh, the product today, we've got just the one thing and that is Fritz Lime 7. We just got this stuff in a couple days ago, which I was very excited about. This is a how many ounce bottle? A 16 ounce bottle. So this is gonna treat many, many, many gallons. And if you don't know what Fritz Lime 7 is, this is a, a thing that we have in our fish room at all times. And the reason we have it in our fish room is it's live nitrifying bacteria. Some of you have heard me talk about this a million times. I've done a video about it. And the reason we have this at all times, it's the live nitrifying bacteria to me has changed how fish keeping happens. And it has potentially solved one of the major issues in fish keeping for new fish keepers. And that is I buy a fish tank. I really want to put fish in it. I don't want to wait. What can I do? Well, thing number one is get filled, you know, use cycled media from another tank that's not diseased. Okay, well, new fish keepers usually don't have access to that. And so fish stores can sell this kind of stuff live nitrifying bacteria. There's lots of products on the market, and I talked about this in a video. There's tons of products on the market that claim to speed up the cycle, but if they don't have the live nitrifying bacteria, in my opinion, the ones that I've used have never, ever, ever worked. But live nitrifying bacteria does because you're adding the microbes that will convert ammonia to nitrite and then convert the nitrite to nitrate. And so what, and we have used this stuff dozens, literally dozens of times. And what you do is when you're setting up a brand new tank, you add a very tiny number of fish. So as an example, if I was setting up a 20 gallon and I wanted a bunch of different types of fish, I might only add two, three or four fish, but then I would add this as directed. And in doing that, we've never had an ammonia spike. So that is the advantage to using a product like Fritz Lime 7. There's another one called Fritz Turbo Start, where if you have an ammonia spike, the Fritz Turbo Start is a way, it's very concentrated nitrifying bacteria that will bring that down quickly. We have that in the fish room too, especially because we bring in so many fish. And when you go from a situation where, and this will be really good. So if you go from a situation where it's like, your power went out and you lost a bunch of your beneficial bacteria in a filter, this goes in. Or if you're, you've got a tank and it's like, oh my gosh, I somehow I, I did a, a thing and I accidentally bought 10 fish. I've only got two in there now. I add these 10, you might get a temporary ammonia spike. This will help either shorten it or alleviate it. Uh, it, it is stuff that, like I said, we've used it a number of times. So now for the giveaway, a couple rules is you have to live in the lower 48 United States because we can't ship out of the country or to Alaska and Hawaii. Two, you gotta be over the age of 18 and three, Make sure you are on live chat, not top chat, because people sometimes get confused and like, man, I thought I won, and then you don't have the right thing. Because in top it's chat, you're order. seeing your chats and the top and the chats that YouTube thinks you're gonna like. Live chat, it puts it in sequential order. Now, what you're gonna do is right. Wait, a number between what and what? Number between one and twenty. Go. First person that gets the number that you enter wrote down on the piece of paper is the person that's going to win the Fritz Lime 7. It's a number between one and 20. Oh geez. And stop. stop, we can stop right now. It's already over. I was gonna so, say, you should slow down the chat next time. Oh, I forgot to do that. Yeah, we said that. I, well, I nobody remember. Nobody reminded me of that. You, I yeah. didn't remind you. Now you remind me. All right, so we're done. You can <laughs> stop typing in numbers. Henceforth, the competition is done. Ooh, wow. There is a lucky winner. Do you see the lucky winner? Well, I've got to scroll. Oh, I think so. Okay, so can is you it... confirm that that's the lucky winner? I right believe there? so. Let me double check. I mean, there was only a, there wasn't that many before the lucky winner. So it's not uh, too bad this time. Correct. What was it last time where we, we had to go for probably like a solid of three minutes? Sometimes, yeah. yeah. And then the other one, wasn't it like the third one? So something? I bet you want to know who won. Oh. <laughs> right? Everybody who are like just having a conversation, like, well, come on, get on with the number already. Yes, yeah, so what temperature is supposed to be around? Yeah, so, yeah, and then the Fritz Lime 7, and I'm going to read all these directions to you. <laughs> so the winner is lucky number 17, Aaron DeHart. DeHart, you're the winner. So here's what you got to do, Aaron. Congratulations. You please send us an email to prime time giveaway 
singular prime time giveaway all one word at yahoo.com send us your mailing address and Joanna will get this stuff out hopefully this week sometimes she slacks off I'm not gonna lie and I'll be sometimes like sometimes because I have to go to UPS cow. yeah so or Aaron, find a box that's not prime good. time giveaway at yahoo.com full mailing address and we'll get the stuff sent out to you hopefully this week okay so congratulations and thank you for everybody who's playing again our plan y'all is we are going to up our giveaway game in 2023 i'm hoping next month we've really got our, our act together because there are some things we can do that will help this situation and make it even more cooler so that is my hope is that not only will just one person win there will be many people who feel pretty good about the situation all right you know i d did anybody see whip pick 47 i don't yeah i did really oh, okay yeah. i just wanted to make sure did anybody see otherwise something's wrong in the universe yeah no whip pick four i think actually i think he picked 47 and a half hmm. if uh memory serves me correctly this is just but so it was fun just blazing through over here scrolling through all the names that we know and maybe some no names that we don't know second floor aquatics i think she put in like a <laughs> zip code slash phone number <laughs> yeah that was cool Shannon. <laughs> yeah that's nice cool that's real nice and then she got serious or it could have been him depending Z on which one of them was typing it in zen ginger's here hey what's up glad you're here yeah so here's the dealio um if you had a question before all these numbers came plowing through bye the, bye. the thing mm -hmm. uh, you can re-ask it because we can't scroll all the way back up to where the questions are very easily again for people who are saying wasn't it me no again you have to be in live chat live chat is sequential top chat is not so that's why maybe it will appear because top chat is always going to show your chats at the top bunny vipers here bunny oh, viper what's yeah. up yeah yeah um oh there was hold on I, I, there I was a one. question no, so I, hi. Shh, you be quiet i'm gonna try you know what i'm gonna I know. try um rage you don't have to make extra noise you don't have to because you make enough noise normally is that true okay joan joan has a question what and this is a good question joan says what color substrate would you use for congo tetras I've kept them on both. I definitely like the dark colors better, like black. Uh, right now I have them in a tank that has like a brown background because it's got the um, the 3D background in that mm -hmm. 140 breeder and it's got a lighter s substrate. They look pretty cool. The, the males still have a lot of color and the fins are cool, but when I've put them on a darker substrate, that, that color, that blue and that red came out a lot better. So I would go darker, but that's just me. Oh, super chat. Hold on. Oh my gosh, there it is. Shiny, thank you so much. Appreciate it. I've got to get going. Couldn't leave without <laughs> tithing a few bucks to the cause. Hope to catch the next live video and see you guys in Dallas. Well, thank hope you so, so much. And uh, yeah, hope to uh, hope you're here next week. And then I also hope to see you in Dallas. So as many people as could make it, that would be really cool. The more, the better. And like we always, and by the way, and I've said this a number of times, but I want to repeat it again. When we are at an event, the whole point of going to the event is to talk with you, hang out with you, share your joy of fish keeping. If you ever see us talking to someone who's a non, like if it's just like another creator or uh, something like that, but feel in. free to butt in because we're here for you. That, that, is the, that is the reason we go to these events. So never feel like you're gonna be bothering us or what, what really, breaks my heart and this has happened a number of times is when someone says oh yeah we were at aquashella we were here we we're there you kind of look sort of busy or you know we, we 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 saw you but we we didn't stop and say hello no man come on you're at aquashella that's what it, that's what it's there for right to stop by say hello that's what we want that's that you got it the more people that come by the better it is for us really truly that's the whole point and that goes for the talks too you know, when we're at Motor City, if you want to stop by there. And by the way, I am and I'm going to speak for them, and I'm just going to say this. I am 90, most clubs, I am 99% sure you don't have to be a member of those clubs just to come see a talk, right? Now, if you were going to go every month, most of them are like, hey, you know, can you pay the 20 bucks a year to, you know, support the club? But if you're just stopping by to see a talk, most clubs 
would be happy to have you there. I know for us personally, because I am on uh, the board of the Greater Chicago Cyclo Association, and uh, we love it when we get somebody in. I remember one time we had Joey come talk, and in fact, that's where I met Kasha. Yeah. Pet keeping that was mm -hmm. the first time. In fact, my channel was just getting started. Kasha, when she subscribed, she was my twentieth subscriber. So. I'll never forget that because I was sitting next to her and she just kind of looked like somebody who must be doing something with YouTube. She had a camera in her hand and we had been basically up and running for about, a, I don't even, not even a month. And mm -hmm. I look at her, I'm like, oh, so you have a YouTube? Are you in YouTube? She's like, yeah, creative pet keeping. At that point, she had like 20,000 subs and I had 19 and she was sub number 20. But anyway, the point of the story was Joey was there and he drew a lot of people in and nobody at GCCA was like, you people can't come in unless you're a member. That was the whole point is we wanted, you know, when you, when you bring people in as to whether it's a YouTube person or someone like um, Ed Connings or someone like really cool who's an expert in the field, the idea is to generate some buzz so that people want to come and see what the club's all about. And if there's value there, you're going to stick around. You're going to, you're going to want to be there the next month and the month after. So, yeah. <gasps> Hold on. What? Stop mid-sentence. Tom says, I live near Boomer Stadium. What fish clubs can I get involved in? First of all, Tom... That's awesome. We are okay. now proud season ticket holders to the Boomers. We were, I'm surprised that, I mean, I don't know if you go there, you say, I, I live near Boomer Stadium. Like we're instantly assuming you're like their number one fan, <laughs> uh, which it's impossible because I think we are. Um, we've got all the Boomers gear and let's face it, we've nerded out so bad we have Pretty season much. tickets. So yeah. that just tells you where, where we're at. Um, so anyway, I'm surprised if you, if you ever go there, we, we were there the last two years a lot. That's why we wound up getting season tickets. I'm like, we buy these ticket packages and like at this point it just makes you sense as well yeah. yeah so anyway if you're in in schaumburg or roselle both of them well actually all right so hold on there's at least five clubs that i can think of four clubs that i can think of off the top of my head that are all going to be convenient for you are you ready here you go greater chicago cichlid association gcca which is otherwise known as the gcca uh, so they have their meetings their monthly meetings and their swaps in Northbrook. So that's not far, right? You just hop on the, uh, what well, used to be, what is that? I call it 290. No, but what's the other one? Elgin O'Hare Expressway. And you just go north on 53 to 90, 90 to 294 Wait, is north. Is it 190? Is it I don't know what it is. It's, it's, maybe it's 390. Elgin O'Hare, yeah. Yeah, so that's not that far. The Greater Chicago Cichlid, I'm sorry, the Greenwater Aquarius Society is in Tinley Park. And their meetings and their swaps are on the same day. So that's a good one. Uh, it's a different kind of feel. Uh, they have food every month. They, they don't have it necessarily a speaker like the GCCA does. So it's not as education focused like that, but it's more communal and you, know, you get to hang out and talk fish and it, it's worth it. It's definitely, it, keep in mind, these clubs that I'm talking about and most of them are the same way. It's like 20 bucks a month. Tom, for you, what's really cool with the Greenwater Aquarius Society is twice a year, they have what's known as a member's points auction where you don't spend any money. They bring in a bunch of fish. You get, I think it's like two or 300 points, which is kind of like two or $300, right? So everybody gets these points. And then you bid on the fish, but you use your points. You're not using actual money. And then you just strategize. Okay, I'm going to bid up to 50 points on this fish. And if I don't get it or I got my points left over. So it's kind of cool. You make your money back just on those alone. And by the way, the swaps... The green water swaps are free. So you got those two. If you like live bears, the Chicago Live Bear Society, their meetings are after the GCCA swaps. So they meet, I think it's at one o'clock whenever there's a GCCA swap. So if you like guppies and uh, uh, goodyids and that kind of thing, mollies, sword tails, that's a great place. Uh, there's also the Chicago Plant Society. And they are always, they always have a booth at the GCCA, GCCA swap. And then you can, they've got, you know, materials, handouts, like, hey, we're going to meet there. I think they meet every couple of months or something like that. But I'm telling you, all of those clubs are well worth the money. Andy Ring says, Greenwater's $25 yearly membership. Yeah, it's cheap. And I think uh, GCCA is the same. And yeah. believe me, just even if you go there and bid on fish in the, you know, the like the Breeder Awards program, the BAPs for GCCA, I promise you. I How many bags of fish did I come home with the last GCCA meeting? Oh, yeah. Five, six. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> I got, I think it was five bags of fish, and I spent five bucks. 
And each bag had between five and 10 fish. Mm -hmm. Some crazy. pretty cool stuff. So I'm telling you, you make your money back within the first meeting. Definitely worth it, especially where you live, because you could do all of those and it's not that big of a deal. Trust me, I'm not that far from you and I do all of them and I don't, I don't consider it to be an inconvenience at all. But I'm a, I'm a weird guy. From uh, Dogman3161, how many additional fish can be put with a six, uh, with six discus 75 planted tank? Today, or maybe a six inch discus, one or the other. We don't know. I think we need uh -huh. to. It so says, I, How many additional fish can be put with a six discus 75 planted tank? Okay, maybe there's six, six in so a 75. So if there were six discus in a 75, I don't know if I'd put anything more in there because eventually, if they really grow to their maximum size, you're probably going to want to move them to like a 150, a taller tank, uh, six foot 150. Um, if it is a if it's one six inch discus, then you've got a little bit of space, but I mean it just depends on what fish you're interested in, right? I mean a lot of people lately have been putting um, redline rasboras with discus. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have been buying them from the swaps because they kind of look like low light tetras. They just get longer, and but the color is very similar and they school much more tightly, which is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, I need to, I need to ask because I'm curious what you're going to say. I oh, think boy. I know, but I. I, I'm curious. Steven wants to know, what is your favorite type of aquarium fish and aquarium plant? Aquarium fish, geophagus, just as a general rule. I, I, like, m the, my favorite geophagus is like the Altafrons, Wine Milleri, um, Cernomensis type. Um, aquarium plant, Crips. I knew if it. If I could only pick one, yeah. Two for you? two. Well, I mean, oh my gosh. Can we just all right, say what, it? All right, what are they? Go ahead. Uh, green Neons and Anubias. Anubius what? Nana Petite. Thank you. Come on. I mean, isn't that like fish keeping 101? If it's, you don't know your significant other's favorite fish and favorite plant. That's right. You have to have a conversation because that could be. problems. That could be offensive. <laughs> uh, Grant says, if anyone lives close to Milwaukee, check out the Milwaukee Aquarium Society. Yeah, then they have a swap as well. One that we haven't been able to get to. But um, yeah, I've heard good things about them. I think it was... I think there is a page on Aquarium Co-op's website where they actually have a list of, it's not a, it's not a complete list of all clubs that exist, but throughout the United States, they've, they've at least attempted to put down clubs that are in there. And if it's not complete and you know of one, you could always add it to their list by emailing them. So I, I remember seeing that at somewhere, at some point. I just don't remember, like, I, like, I don't have the link or anything. Um, that outdoor guy says, well... Okay, then. Guess you guys don't want to answer my question. What question? We get a lot of questions. I'm, we're trying to pull them as fast as possible. Yeah. So who can see that outdoor guy's question? I'm looking. Uh, I'm scrolling up. I don't see it. But shoot it again. We'll keep an eye open for it. Jet Set Mama says, is there a glass top for my three-gallon shrimp tank? There probably is, but good luck finding it. So two things you can do with that. One, you could go to any store that sells greenhouse siding. It's polycarbonate. I would get the eight mil polycarbonate greenhouse siding. You can either use like a little hacksaw or maybe in a really good pair of like heavy duty scissors and cut that to shape. Or what one of the things that you've done is you've gone to like the dollar store and have basically just used the glass from a picture. Now that's not gonna necessarily be like the exact size, but depending, you might be able to get it pretty close if you want to use glass, but either one works. I doubt you're going to find the exact one, like if it broke or you lost it or it didn't come with it and that's the way you bought it. You probably won't find the exact one, and if you did, it'll cost you as much as the tank. But either polycarbonate siding or think about using a picture from a really cheap dollar store picture frame. Most of those things might even be plastic anyway, not glass. Well, right? it would be even better if it's acrylic because a uh, glass that's made for a, to be a fish tank lid is totally different than a dollar store yeah, piece true. of glass for a frame. Thin. And if I do use it in a pinch for a, for a nano tank, I would keep it in the frame because it does have those little, those little hooks and it kind of helps to keep it sturdy. Uh, and that's oh, why you can point. also good duct point. tape them cheap We've and dirty. That. Yeah. duct tape two together and then you have a hinged lid one of box. our 10 gallon tanks in our quarantine area behind the hot water yeah. unit that has got your <laughs> your super special duct tape two the, picture frames together and it works right. great uh, it's been working for years i'm surprised that duct tape hasn't like fallen apart but it hasn't that's right you owe me two dollars for that wait what what are you two dollars for i want my that two dollars lid that i made you 
what movie is that from? <laughs> I want my two dollars. I actually don't remember the name of the movie, but I know it's from a movie because we people used to quote it all the time. I don't know it. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Jeff H, thank you for the last nine months being a prime time partner. Found this free chat in the ten gallon on the second rack from the left, three from the top, just right of the twenty under the fourth shelf on the new side. I think. I love it. You know what that's from, right? Mm -mm. It's from. I'm pretty sure it's from the uh, the short that I put out today. Wait, what was it again? Say no. Say I know not your short. What? What's the? So I found this free chat in the ten gallon on the second rack from the left, three from the top, just right of the twenty <laughs> under the fourth shelf on the new side. I think. Yeah. I love that's, it. That's about it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for that. Kevin's been a member for a month. Thank you. Happy one month anniversary. Just want to say love the channel. I'm from Texas, but I'm writing this from downtown Chicago. Go Oscars, LOL. That's cool. So you're from Texas, but writing that from downtown Chicago, are you going to go back to Texas? Like, are you just here for a quick stopover? Because that can be pretty disappointing when you live in Texas and you're used to the nice warm weather, and then you come here, it's like snow and salt and all kinds of things. That can be rough, I would imagine. I'm pretty sure if we ever left this state, it'd be rough coming back sometimes. But, oh, I can't wait for the freezing cold and the salt to ruin my car and all the other things. That'll be awesome. All right, let me see. I saw something. JT wants to know, do you know Chris Biggs? I have met him before at the OCA. Yeah. I mean, I don't know him, no. I'm like, we'd be like, hey, man, what's going on? How you been? How's the family? But I've met him at the OCA. Sweet. And I believe... He's going to be speaking there again this year. Oh. Yeah. Cool. I believe that is true. Uh, Tracy's channels of interest. In a 10-gallon column tank, how many cherry shrimp should I start out with? And should I keep one color of shrimp or do a variety of colors of shrimp? So I would only keep one color because if you keep multiples, they like to default back to brown. So unless you want your colored shrimp to eventually kind of go back to brown, I would not keep multiples together so just pick your favorite if you don't care about that i mean they'll stay different colors for a while but within a couple of years you'll be like all right i've got a bunch of brown shrimp so pick your favorite in a 10 gallon column tank I, probably 10 to 12 I, I mean not that the i mean you could do a heck of a lot more but if you start with 10 to 12 and they breed they'll fill your tank up for you, you don't have to spend a ton of money at first but 10 to 12 would be a good start I think. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Better wait. off dead? Maybe. I don't remember. I just remember. That that seems to be the consensus. I think that's okay. where it's from. I'm going to agree with you. I just knew the, the, the quote. I don't remember. The, now I'm quoting movies I don't remember. Oh, oh no. That's messed up. Whew. Boink says, as tiny as they are, female teacup pregnant platy bellies are scary to this <laughs> fish mouth. Is there degree of swollen belly transparency that would be a sign to move her to a breeder box if you think your lovely young lady is going to have babies you could move her now because she's just going to be kind of waddling around in the tank anyway so you can move her Richard says I have severe I have severe black beard algae I got a Siamese algae eater algae gone into oh um Gone in two weeks. Thanks for the suggestion. That's cool. That is very cool. Awesome. That Happy is, story. Yeah. So I've actually, I moved. I had, I had the, so all right, let me tell you the story. At a 20 gallon, it was upstairs here for a while, and I built a fake rock background. And then I put uh, fluorite substrate, and I planted it. It was my first ever planted tank, and it really took off. It was great. At the very beginning, I think I was worried about blackbeard algae because I started to see a little bit. And since I'd never had planted tanks before, I was like, you know what? I don't know exactly what I'm going to do about this. So I bought a couple of Siamese algae eaters for this 20 gallon. Then that tank moved down in the basement. The plants got crazy overgrown and there was some guppy grass in there. That tank over the years has held many different types of fish. But eventually what happened is we had a bag of an unmarked bag of shell dwellers. And at the time, because they were a little bit stressed, I couldn't tell if they were similis or Maltese. So I just took that, actually, I don't even know if it was an unmarked, I think it was like three of them. And I chucked them in that 20 gallon. I'm like, I'm not putting them with the Maltese. I'm not putting them with the similis because I don't know what they are. I'm just going to leave them in there. 
I didn't realize or I didn't think that those two Siamese algae eaters were still in there. Well, after a while, I'm like, what are those big fish? They were still there and now they're that large. So I recently pulled all those plants out, realized that they were in fact similar that I put in that tank because I thought, this, I don't know why I was thinking, there were no shells in there. I'm like, oh, the same three will be in there. I netted out the three, chucked them in the 125 tank and you can tank. I was like, okay, I'm done. Well, turns out they hide in that wall. There's still 10 more in there. So I'm like, they have been breeding, but I moved those Siamese algae eaters out into the 125. Members know that that 125 has got a nice big coating of blackbeard algae. It's not like crazy out of control, but I want to see if they put a dent in it. That's my long story, so. just to say I moved Yuck. some big Siamese algae eaters into a 125. Kevin, thank you so much for the super chat. I'm in Chicago on business. Have a cool stocking question. I have a 125 and have two Severums, two electric blue cars, and an Oscar. That's a cool combo. Would another Oscar be a good thing or a trouble? Could be trouble <laughs> for two reasons. There's, I, I foresee only one way where this might somewhat work out. If your current Oscar is a female and you potentially throw another Oscar in there that is a female, maybe they tolerate one another. But if that Oscar has been in there a long time and it's a large Oscar, it may not appreciate another Oscar in its its area just because it's used to having its own space. If it is a male, adding another Oscar could be a problem. A, if you add another male, they may or may not take to one another. Or if it's a female and they start digging out big giant pits in that 125 to breed and they become a breeding pair, you've got a much more significant issue. My opinion is, if this is working right now, and I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. It's a good combination with the Severums, the Electric Blue Car, and the Oscar. If you were thinking about adding something to that tank, why not try, and we've talked about it before, why not try a GFA? You're going to get a ton of color. Uh, those usually get along just fine. Like I said, the Firemouth type cichlids would probably do well in a tank like that for the most part. Uh, what else that would be large enough? Or you could try to do, even if you wanted to do some type of schooling larger fish like some silver dollars or like I mentioned the mascara barb earlier might be kind of cool right so filamentosis barb those are those are good options All right, I Raphael want to, cat I want to do a movie quote because oh you said trouble you're not going to get it but I want to see if anybody gets it okay you ready because you said trouble so let me see if I get this right stands for trouble starts with T, trying to P, which stands for pool. <laughs> no idea. But, no. but I need to ask a question to the audience, and maybe you'll know, but you can't answer it. Okay. I was watching, I don't know why, but I was watching The Dirty Dozen last night. In mm. color, by the way. The main, like the head major guy, right, mm -hmm. who, who's Lee in Marvin? charge. Is he the same guy, he the guy from The Wild One, who's like the, the drunk guy? Lee Marvin, yes. Uh, Wino Willie? Yeah. Is he really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. I think so. Wait, no, that's... I think no, he no. is. Yeah. Wait, Lee... No, no, no. Uh, no. Uh, Coburn. Char uh, Charles Coburn. The one who starts the fight? No, I know. I know. Who takes his trophy? Because he's also in charade. I think it's the same guy. Right around guy. the same time. Um, I'll have to look into that for you. You I'm guys big let me into, know. Like, Oh, so I think it's the same dude. But there's another... Uh, wait, there was a question I wanted to get here. Oh, it was a really good question. Can... um. Wait, who I'm said stuck. it? Uh, I forget. I forget who left the question. But can assassin snails go with shrimp? I, I have believe. combined them, but I am not one hundred percent certain that the assassin snails weren't cutting down on shrimp populations. Mm. But I've heard people say, "No, not a good idea." It's not something I think I would do on purpose. Because mm, I've got a little case. one in my in my yellow shrimp tank, and I know they do kind of the shrimp kind of gang up on them and and kind of clean them up. So it's kind of like a fun. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, even baby shrimp, all they got to do is like kind of kind know, of jerk away, and then yeah. <laughs> what's the assassin snail going to do? It's like Man, wait, wait, wait. I just saw I slime all the way over there. Wait, wait. I just saw somebody say something, but they gave me part of the answer. Oh, Robert Preston. Music man. Okay, but nobody answered my question about the wild one and Dirty Dozen. I don't oh, trust your answer. Okay, so wait. James Coburn. Thank you. I was like, Charles Coburn, that's not James Coburn. Yes. I, I think believe. He plays Wino Willie, and I think he's I got, also I'm gonna the look major. At, <laughs> Wino Willie. <laughs> I think it's. 
thing is James Coburn because he's also in Charade. Franklin folks says, I have a 30 gallon tank with two corridors, one dwarf frog wondering what is a larger fish I could add to them. I don't know if I would go much larger than like a dwarf gourami or peacock gudgeons. Uh, the only reason why is a dwarf frog, right? If you get something that's too large, they might start trying to pick off arms and legs and stuff, and that would not be the best thing in the world. So, and plus the dwarf frogs eat very, very, very slowly. So anything that is going to be fast moving or somewhat large, that's going to be, you know, eating all of the pellets and everything. I, I found it somewhat difficult at times to keep the dwarf frogs with a lot of different types of fish. And they just get so outcompeted for food. I'd have to spot feed them. So I'm not, yeah, maybe like a honey grommy would probably be okay. I don't know if the dwarf grommy would be too curious and maybe pick at it. I mean, it wouldn't necessarily eat it, but I just don't know the temperament wise if that would work out so well. Jeez. Somebody said rose lines with a question mark. Kevin said, yeah, rose lines are great. Absolutely. If you're talking about the tank that you have, for sure. Rose lines would be really good. Got a bunch of them in the fish room right now, like 50 of them that are waiting to go out to the swaps. And boy, did they come in looking good. We love Roseline Sharks. I have I, I had a group in the 125 with my Vieja. And for some reason, most of them died and I've just got one left, but he's big and healthy and crazy. Wait, Laura says, I have assassin snails and shrimp in all my tanks, no issues. Good. Yeah, I mean, I would. I guess the shrimp would just move away if the assassin snail started trying to assassinate. And uh, the assassin snail would have to swim a long way. Odie says, Lee Marvin was Chino in the gang, the Beatles, and he was the major. So, yeah, but then he wasn't he also the guy in Wild One? Because that name sounds familiar, Lee Marvin. I'm looking up. You know what? IMDb yeah. is not as good as it used to be. It's, it's laid out totally different. I'm finding James Coburn in The Magnificent Seven. Okay, well, that doesn't matter. I know, but it's not <laughs> listing... Um, The one you just watched. Dirty Dozen? Thank you. Yeah. No, uh, so maybe Lee Marvin is the... OD is... Or Cutie, sorry, Cutie. Um, that's correct. And that, I'm pretty sure that was the dude who fought... But here, hold the guy on. I'm for just the gonna trophy. To, I'm going to have to look it up separately. Yeah, the drunk guy. What's the... What is that? Lee Marvin. No, no, no. The wild the, one. Thank you. Okay. Parker says, what is a good size saltwater tank to get for a beginner. I have no idea, Parker, because I have never in my life kept a saltwater tank. If I was going to do one, I'd probably, I can't, I'm just talking about myself. I'd probably want to start with a 75 just because I feel like the volume of water would be a little bit easier to manage. Yeah. Ah, thank you. Cutie says, yes, it was the wild one. Thank you. I thought, I, they obviously look very different because the movie is 15 years apart and in one movie he's you know a dude and then the next movie is an older dude but i could tell by the voice and i'm not like a, i don't watch a lot of old movies so i don't have no. a good background uh steve says do you keep neil ampelagos uh penguins i'm asking because i had to get them at my aquarium store it's my first time seeing them i don't know if i i brought in a lot of lake tanganyikans and some of them I had for a limited period of time where I would throw them in. That sounds familiar, like I might have had them, but it didn't really leave a huge impression on me. Uh, in terms of, I don't think I had them long enough. I might have brought them in and then immediately moved them back out again, like as a part of my plan. But I don't, yeah, I don't have a bunch of information for you, unfortunately. Yeah. You didn't answer the one between um, Lamb Chop and Glow Light, did you? No. Okay. Um, this is from DRP. What is the difference between lamb chop and glow light rasbora? Because I was told they were basically the same thing by the pet store. However, all the fish didn't school together. Lamb chop and doesn't doesn't really look like the glow light. Oh, I'm thinking glow light tetra. You're thinking the glow light tetra. I don't know. I so. I mean, lamb, lamb chop, chop and, and uh, harlequin kind of look similar. To yeah. Me. I don't know if they're and somebody who's more of a rasbora expert on those three. Because I, to be honest, I sometimes get the lamb chop and the harlequin and the glow light confused. Like those three, for some reason, I just they look so similar to me. Well, it's kind of like the chili, there's, there's, the mirror, and the dwarf. Well, those those I know instantly. Mm -hmm. Probably because I have so much more experience. It's like the minute you show me a dwarf, a chili, or a mirror, it's like I know them just by really? their pattern. Yeah. Yep. That's I know. Amazing. Isn't that cool? Yes, you know it is. You know what's really fun Bonus is points. we get these orders in. And 
they come in boxes and bags that are unlabeled. So that's always fun. Like one time I ordered three different types of geophagus and nothing was labeled. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll keep the bag separate. Now I got to try and figure out what these are. And luckily I bred a fair number of them. So at the two inch mark, it's like, all right, I guess I got this figured out. Uh, this time it was rainbow fish. And there was like four or five different types of rainbow fish. And again, it's, it's one thing when they're growing, you're like, okay, this is simple. But that's another thing when they're tiny, you're like, oh, you, you, you want to know a trick? Let me tell you a trick that I've learned, that I've done. And maybe this is not a new trick. Maybe people have done it before. But if you're trying to distinguish rainbow fish and you have somebody who gives, you know, you wind up with hundreds of them and nothing is labeled, what I do to figure it out is I keep all the bags separate and I put them all in different tanks and then I turn the lights on. And the minute you turn the lights on, sometimes those, even the small ones, will actually show some color, like the color they're probably going to show when they get older. And that's the way I tell them apart. It's a pro tip for you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the combo between Noel and uh, Cheryl. <laughs> Noel knows a whole other chorus line, a whole longer one. Okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Of, from Music Man. It's a catchy song. I don't know how these, how these actors remember these lines to these songs. They sing and the little ditties. They, how did they do that? How do they have the memory? I don't get it. Uh, Grant says... I wouldn't put any African cichlids in a 20 gallon minimum 55. Uh, if you're talking about Lake Malawi's, yeah. If you've got, if you want African cichlids in a 20 and you want to stay small, you could do the shell dwellers. Um, is there anything else I'd put in a 20? And even those, you got to be careful. Like the Simless and the Maltese are fine in a 20. But even some of the, the more like bulldog looking ones, like the Brevis, Ocelotus, Meleagris, they, the most you're going to do long term is probably a pair that's going to get along. Maybe a couple pairs in a 20 long. But Lake Victorians, I wouldn't put in a 20. They just get too mean. All the Malawis that come to mind get too mean. Are there any other Lake Tanganyikans I'd put in a 20? Probably not. Just Maltese and Simulus, I think, would be safe. Kevin, thank you for the super chat again, man. I appreciate it. I learned so much from both of you. I'm looking uh, I'm looking at Geos. In a 125 with the stocking I have, would you recommend a number? Also have Bristol's Pleco, Pictus in the tank. That's great. You, you've got a great combo. I mean, you've done your homework. Clearly, you've done your homework because... That's a combo that would definitely work. Uh, in terms of the number for the geophagus, it's a 125, and they're most likely going to ignore the other fish. So if you want to go with, I mean, ideally, if, if you could, the, the nice thing about geophagus is the females look almost as good as the males, if not nearly identical, except for a little bit of their shape, their size, and maybe the fins don't get as long. But you in a 125, you could pick any of the geos. Like I said, the Brazilianses are the most semi like if you're gonna have any aggression problems whatsoever ever it would probably come from the brazilianzas i might stay away from geophagus steindachneri they're of all the geophagus you could get they're the least colorful of the group and they can also be the males can get a little bit um a little bit more assertive but you've got the tapajos easily you could do a couple males and like f a couple females right if you had a couple pairs no big deal uh Wine Milleri, Altafrons, Cyrenomensis, Dichrososter. Oh, Pelagrini. That's another one that we've kept that was really cool. Remember, we had a group of those in a 125. So Thank all of those, I mean, you could start out with, I don't know how big your Oscar is. Part of that's going to be if your Oscar is really big, you don't want to get geophagus that are too small and they're not going to get eaten. But if you start out with a half a dozen, later on, if you have problems, trust me, you are going to have no, no problems selling nearly full grown colored up geophagus like if you got if you start with a half a dozen which you could in that tank with that stocking as long as they're big enough for the oscar not to eat buy a half dozen pick pick one that you really really love and then later on it's going to take a while for them to grow up and it's going to probably take them a while to grow up and then even show a hint of aggression especially in a six foot tank and if you have that problem you can go back to a pet store and be like hey i've got a really beautiful four or five inch geophagus wine milleri show them a picture be like i'm going to want money for this thing because you're going to turn around and sell it for 60 bucks give me 20 bucks or 30 bucks for it and if not then you bring it you know you could sell it online you could sell it on aqua bid you could have somebody pick it up and and make 40 50 bucks easily you'll probably if you bought if you were able to buy them small and you had to sell some of the larger ones you'd probably make your money back because they're absolutely gorgeous Rocky says, what's your favorite? Nano fish are scarlet baddest safe for shrimp? 
No. Scott Battis, I wouldn't trust around shrimp. I don't know if you would. I mean, there's tiny, but I just don't no. trust them. They're too curious They're and too predatory. Tiny, but uh, favorite stinkers. nano fish for me. What's my favorite nano fish? Is it the chili rasbora? Yes. I think so. No. No. Not that I'm aware of. I don't know. It's the first one that came to my mind. What do I always say is my favorite? My CPDs? Yeah, I like those too. I like. But the, you like the uh, green kubatai too. I do, but I, I wouldn't pick the green kubatai over the celestial pearl daniel slash galaxy rasbora. I don't think I would pick them over the chili. And the miras that we have are insane. They're looking really good. So I might pick those as well over now, nano, what are you going with nano? Besides green nano, I mean, if you have to go really nano. Um, if I had to go really nano, um, you know what? I've never actually thought, if I can't have the green neon, what would probably, probably the chili. Probably the chili. That's cool. Yeah. The outdoor guy says, pea puffer is worth breeding? Absolutely. Not yeah. necessarily easy to feed the fry, but if you can get them breeding, and they're not hard to breed, but definitely. I can't even imagine baby be really pea cute. puffers. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. My brain, I just, no. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but th that is a fish that <sighs> would certainly be worth breeding. It's And it's not incredibly common. Like when we go to swaps and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, I don't ever recall seeing them, but I bet there is... I, I would think so. And, and the other thing too is when pet stores bring them, when they when they buy them, sometimes they're not, they can be a little bit hard going through the supply chain, you know, from breeder to wholesaler to pet store to end user. So there's some loss there. So if you can breed them and, and supply healthy pea puffers to a pet store or sell them direct, I think there's, that could certainly be a possibility. Yep. All right, everybody. I think... We're going to call it a night because we actually ran a couple minutes over our normal time. Wow, but you guys have a lot fast. of good questions. Thank you for that. And thank you for everybody and all the super chats tonight and all the great questions. And hopefully we'll see you at one of these events this year. Like I said, we've got 30-something left, so plenty of opportunity there. Oops, just saw another one come through. Jeff, thank you so much for the super chat. Our hotel at Akashello is right down the street from Aquarium Adventure there in Schaumburg. <sighs> nice local fish store. Do you know? Shop there. Got some driftwood. Yeah, we will use that store from time to time, especially for aquariums or driftwood or rocks. Driftwood. They've yep. got a massive selection yeah, they've and got a cool rocks. Big selection. Yeah. There's also one in Bolingbrook. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Yep, it's a it's a big place. So, but thank you. Appreciate the super chat. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. Uh we will be back next Wednesday, same time, same place. Bring your questions. Sorry if we didn't get to answer yours. We try as best we can. Try again next week. Really appreciate it. And we will see you in seven days. <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Weird.